Grace and peace, everybody. Thank you for making us a part of your day. My name is Chris Bailey, and we're welcoming you into part number two of our five-part series looking at creation, Genesis as the Foundation, part two. In this series specifically, we want to look at different aspects of the creation story that go a little bit deeper. In fact, we want to look at the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why did God give them to us, and what purpose do they serve? Let's pray. This is important, Lord, because many people view the sun, moon, and stars as gods or as entities that are divine in themselves or they're to guide our lives. But why did you give them to us, Lord? Answer this, please, we pray in your word. Amen. I'm grateful to know that we can know these mysteries and these things that appear to be beyond us are, they may be far away, but they're not beyond our grasp because of this book and the creation story. See, when you go back and look in creation and understand that all of God's creation serves a function for God and not a basis of our faith. They all serve as, as a function to serve or to, to make manifest or even to, to do what God has said, but they are never themselves gods. In the Bible story where God makes these luminaries, as we call them, in 1 verse 14 and 15 of Genesis God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Well, let's get to what they were by what they were not. At no point in the creation story do we see the Lord calling them gods or something that we're supposed to look to as a basis of faith or to worship. Never, zero, not it. You don't see it in the word of God. So that's what they're not for. That's pretty easy. But what were they for? Well, that's really just as easy as long as you read. He said, let them be for. In other words, that for is the indication of the purpose or intent. When he says use them for science, he's not talking about to be science to read the future. He's talking about science to understand the seasons and times. As you know that the winter sky and the stars look a bit different than the summer uh, stars and skies. And then he says that they're supposed to be lights, literally lights to enlighten and to give light to the night. But he doesn't stop there because he says, let them be lights to give light to the earth because he made two even greater lights. In chapter one, verse 16, God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. The stars are referenced in those preceding verses, but it's powerful to see how here in this account of the sun and the moon, those words were not used, neither in the Hebrew or other languages, because those words were too closely aligned because they had been taken and turned into pagan words or words to identify them as gods. So thank you, Jesus. The Lord inspires the prophet Moses when he writes these books to simply use the term a greater light or a brighter light in the daytime and a lesser light or lower light in the night, but both lights. This is interesting because we don't see a record of one light giving light to another. It's the Lord who invests light in each light. One's brighter, one's less bright. Any different than you have two lights, two light bulbs. One light bulb doesn't light another bulb, but one bulb may be 45 watts and another one may be 85 watts. Different wattages, separate lights, but both lights. This is important and you'll see this going forward in the lesson. But when you finally read in Genesis 1, 17 to 18, God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Not only do they give light, but the scripture is intentional to say that these lights, they give light to the earth. We don't see them being referenced to give lights to other places, but to the earth. And these lights that work independent one of the other because of the light that God gave them, that's their purpose, their intent. They're not supposed to be looked at as gods, but they're be looked at as things that God made that give glory to him, that he's greater than them, that he's more awesome than they are. 
So the next time you go outside and you see a starry night or the next time you go out in the middle of the day and you wipe your brow and you realize like, ooh, it's hot out here. It lets you know how powerful the one who made that light is. And it lets you know how glorious it is to know that even in the darkest of night, there's always a light of hope. These are messages that are both scientific, but they're also spiritual. There are things that are, are, are factual, but they're also theological that help us see him for who he is. Not as creation, but who he is, God of creation.